Okay, uh, Anne's going to talk for about time. I should welcome now Anne Comber and Louise McConnell. We quite have got Luke on the camera. Yeah. Hello, mm -hmm. uh, but you'll see them in a minute because we're going to get that um, sorted. Uh, they're going to talk to us this evening for about 40 minutes. Uh, after 40 minutes, we'll have the opportunity for questions and so on. So, uh, uh, now I was going to give a long introduction, an impressive introduction, because I've you know been practicing this all day <coughs> about ants, but I've had a sneak preview of his, of his presentation, and he's so brilliant at being self publicist that it all appears in his presentation. So I'm not going to say any more about him because he's going to introduce himself. I'm sure you give him a round of applause. We'll have huge applause online as well, which we'll be able to see. Can you welcome Ann Conrad, first of all? Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Um, thank you for that nice introduction. And thank you for inviting us to, to come and talk to uh, the Chairman Canal Trust. It's really um, greatly appreciated. Um, and before I go into any, any presentation, uh, really, um, I have to thank you guys as the Chair of the Canal Trust for all the work you do on the river. It's, it's amazing the, the amount of effort that goes in as a volunteer organisation, as a, a, a charity group. Um, Neil and the team are on the river every other weekend, come rain, wind, wind this weekend that was blowing the boat up the, 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 up the bank as they were trying to get it off of the, the quay. Um, doing an immense amount of work keeping us free of penny ward uh, on the whole and it is it's it's so greatly appreciated because it frees our small team up to be able to do other things on the river because it is something that if we don't control um, and it gets out of hand we will lose control of the river effectively so so thank you and I didn't thank you guys this, by the way. you know this was completely unscripted way <laughs> um so thank you and thank you guys for supporting that so um neil asked me to to, to come along the this evening eight to introduce myself um and to talk a little bit about the uh, the future so uh, i guess if we if we, if we click the best way to, to introduce myself is to show a picture of I wouldn't want anybody else in the world in this day and age to do ever. That was me when I was about six. Um, I lived in Haybridge, grew up in Haybridge. I lived there on Avenue, which you could almost throw a tennis ball to the navigation from. Um, that was 1979, we think. Um, and obviously, I shouldn't be walking on a frozen navigation, but um, I, I, I grew up there. Remember the, you can just click again for me. Um, I remember the Sobago, uh, which was our family boat, um, it's an Nantucket clipper, being uh, dragged back off the banks in 87 when the storms came through and took out half the village. Um, we were down there trying to pull her back off the bank. She was moored in the, the basin for about 10 years. Um, that's us as kids at Bradwell. I couldn't find one of us as kids in the basin, wearing around being on that little blonde thing in the middle. I don't know, I was in about eight, I guess. I can probably be that old, but um, what I'm trying to say is that I have a huge affinity um, with the river and grew up in, in the area. I know how important it is to, to the people of the community um, across Essex um, and what a great facility it is, it was, and it certainly can be. So I just wanted to, to really share that. So when I did grow up, I went to Plume, um, I left home and left Haybridge. Uh, about 20, and I disappeared around the world. And I disappeared around the world in summer then for a while, um, working super yachts in my late teens, early 20s. Um, so I've always had an affinity with, with water, and if you can press again for us, please. And, and still today, these are my two kids, paddle boarding on the black water. Uh, must have been the calmest day of last summer for it to be that flat on the black water and to be able to stand up on a paddle board on the black water, because most of the time I fall off. But um, that's just ran up the creek. And my dad's boat, which is, is moored um, in Bradwell Creek, and we've been members of BQYC, the yacht club up there for 40, that's been a member for 42 years, Commodore three times. So uh, sailing the river and the navigation are. Um, uh, uh, I think we need this light off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, right? You can't see so well. Okay. Is that better? Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. You didn't want to see them ones anyway, to be honest, because yeah, they were mainly of me. So, so um, yeah, not the most handsome chap. Uh, 
love. But anyway, um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I grew up in Hanbridge, loved the, the waterways, um, loved sailing, loved boats, um, and I've had a, if you press the next slide for us, had a, an interesting career when I got back from Australia. Um, first of all, I was manager for Beef Eater um, in Rayleigh, the Silver Jubilee, where I won Beef Eater Manager of the Year twice. I left them and became an area manager for Hungry Horse. So my career has been through hospitality and tourism. So I went from Hungry Horse to run two holiday parks for Haven Holiday Park. So uh, culminating at the Orchards in Clacton, which is a 1200 base holiday park or town. Um, so it's got 1200 units on it um, and every facility that you would expect with a, a holiday park of that size. Um, when my kids were, when my oldest was about 11 um, and went to senior school, uh, I soon worked out I had a great relationship with an 11 year old girl. Hello, hello. And that was sort of it because I was at work running holiday parks whilst they were at school. When they were off of school, I was at work. So I never really saw the kids. So um, uh, 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 then being uh, 11, I took a, a complete change in direction and joined a Reva. Um, the bus company um, who operate Southend and Colchester buses um, and was with them for a couple of years and very successful um, with them, general manager of the year. Um, I moved across to first group um, and was the business development director um, for first group um, UK for, for two years. Um, and then COVID. And, and Boris came along and said, well, keep the buses running. If you don't drive it, you ain't got a job, basically. <laughs> so that was the end of that. Um, and, and we, uh, but it, that experience, for me, when I got made redundant, left me a bit hanging for, for a while. And I saw this role being advertised as general manager of the, the waterways. And I saw the advert. Oh, I don't know if, I've got, I'm, I'm, if I'm qualified for that, but that's sort of my dream job, to go back to something I've cared about since I was knee-eyed to, to my mum to, uh, uh, and take uh, an active part in moving it forward and moving it to, 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 to develop a business um, with it. Um, and this experience has given me the toolkit to enable me to engage with the woman's way in maybe a slightly different way to my predecessors and the, the way it's been run before. But um, I love the place. Um, and if you can press this for us. Um, I've got a slide here that, that talks about the history of the navigation and that it was first thought of in 1677. And I learned all of this stuff um, the first time by going to Haybridge County Primary School where they walked us along the navigation in the equivalent of year three, sort of year three, I suppose. Um, we walked up to the waterworks and we had someone for, from the navigation company, as it was then, talk to us about the history of the, the river um, and how the horses used to drag the barges along and it used to be the rope that would cut all the grass and keep the, the grass clearer and that kind of stuff. And um, it stuck with me forever. Um, I'm not going to... You guys probably know more of this history stuff than, than I do, so I'm not going to dwell on this slide for too long. But um, to so just talk about really that the IWA um, stepped in in 2005 and formed Essex Waterways. Um, and since 2005, we've had responsibility for, for the management of the council. Um, can you get the cross Great. Since taking over, um, does anyone remember 2005? It seems like a, a, a lifetime ago now, doesn't it, with, with COVID and everything else? But hasn't the waterway changed since 2005? Hasn't it developed? Hasn't the hasn't, uh, usages of the waterway changed significantly? Um, in 2005, there was the, the basin, and uh, you'd have visiting yachts and, and boats and fishing boats. and like in the basin and there were a few commercial vessels, a few leisure vessels uh, on the river. But now we have we worked it out that there were about three and a half thousand paddle sports licenses sold last year on our navigation. It's an immense playground. It's a 14 mile park 
for the people of Essex. It's completely different as a business to anything else in our environment. It attracts so many diverse people now. It's wonderful, really. It's beautiful place, the amount of change that, that's happened. What we've got to start doing is learning how to, how to manage these new clientele and how to engage with these new clientele and how to uh, educate, I'd be as bold as to say, some of these, these new clientele. But um, we now have four, soon to be five um, trip boats on the navigation. Um, Back at Water Dawn down in Haywich Basin, um, Albert at uh, Paper Mill Drop Lock, and Victoria at uh, Paper Mill Lock, which is our large, large one. I suppose the fourth one, strictly speaking, isn't on the navigation, is it? Um, I'm, I'm waiting for Neil to interject there because we, we actually, uh, during the course of last year, uh, we're talking to the Business Improvement District in Chelmsford. Um, and Chelmsford's a beautiful city. And it's got these two lovely waterways that run through it. And no one uses them. You see the canoeists use them, that's not fair. The canoeists love them and the canoeists use them. We haven't got any boats on them. So we're uh, working with the Business Improvement District, put a small radar sort of sized um, vessel on the navigation, uh, not on the navigation, on the, the Chelmer, uh, and run hourly trips through the Chelmer Park up to the viaduct and back round again to outside the meadows and Costa area um, in the town centre. So we now have four trip boats um, on the navigation. With uh, the fourth trip boat, um, because I'd have to have a staff or volunteer standing there selling tickets for it, we've got a little ice cream kiosk that goes with that in the middle of the, the town centre. So, so just to, to try and pay for itself, really pay for, for, for their team and stuff. Um, we now have kayak hire on the river. We saw all these other guys coming along with their inflatable kayaks. And in my first six weeks, I suppose, um, I must have been asked 20 times, do you hire kayaks? Do you hire paddle boards? Do you hire dinghies? I'm concerned about dinghies. I've been rowing dinghies my whole life and they've got a wingspan out here somewhere and navigation's not big enough to have dinghies on it really up that end with Victoria going through the middle of them. Um, and we didn't really fancy paddle boards um, overly because of the health and safety implications of someone standing up on an inflatable thing that's never done it before. But we did buy some kayaks. We bought 10 kayaks and canoes last year that went down very successfully to the point that over the winter, I bought another 10 kayaks and canoes to be able to we operate the first 10 out of Paper Mill Lock. We'll be operating the second 10 out of Hamish Basin to be able to uh, encourage people onto the water and onto the water for, from different aspects and different people. So um, we're a, a training facility. One of the things that we're very proud to be able to do at the moment is we have the ambulance service come and do their white water training at Paper Mill and Rush's Lock every Wednesday. Um, and they come regardless of the weather. The more rain, the better. But they were down last week in the freezing cold. They must be mad. But um, they're there every Wednesday. We were doing a lot of work last year with the Sea Cadets and Army Cadets doing their Duke of Edinburgh activities. Um, normally, they would be going off to Wales or to Scotland or uh, far-flung places from Chelmsford. Um, but the leaders assured us that they had more fun outside their door than they had going to Wales because it meant something to them. They built some um, willow faggot banks uh, along the, the navigation. Um, do you guys know what willow faggot bank is? No, no. Um, use willow to, as a natural way to, to rebuild a bank. So the, the, the faggots or, or um, arms, branches, you weave together, you pin them against the bank and then the sediment from the river settles on it and it will build up the bank itself. So the, the army cadets and sea cadets were, were doing that last year. They built canoe landing stages at Paper Mill Lock <coughs> and down at Rush's, uh, Rush's Lock. Um, so we had a great time with, time with them. Um, but it, it, it really is now a river that, uh, or a navigation that is for everybody. And we need to, to look going forward about how we can, can facilitate that. And really stuff like that. So one of the things that we have been very conscious of in the last few years uh, as a board has been the, the amount of reduction in grant funding. 
um, for, for things like the, the navigation. So we've been actively um, trying to make ourselves so sustainable. So our commercial arm, if you like, uh, has been able to make itself so that we we can we're, we're a zero profit business that is profitable enough to stay in business, if that makes sense. Uh, if you, you can press first. So in my time, which uh, it says up there a year, but I turned up in March last year. Um, so not quite a year, 11 months today. Um, so the, the guys have got a book for a year that we're losing soon, but um, <laughs> we've replaced uh, to, some lock gates that uh, were worn out on the arms that got a couple of the arms break during the course of the season. Kids like using them as a diving board. Um, and when they get three or four of them, often they have, uh, unfortunately snap. So we've changed them. We, these pictures here are of us repairing the lock seal at uh, Paper Mill Lock. Uh, first week of the school holidays, all ramped up, ready to go. Let's get all the boats uh, and, and everything working. Um, we could not actually fill up Paper Mill Lock because the plug was out at the bottom, effectively, where the seal at the bottom of the locks had, had broken. We couldn't get the water in quickly enough to stop it going out. So we had to dam it off middle of the school holidays, thousands of people peering over the top at Michael and the guys out there. They're gunning out the, the concrete seal at the bottom and then reinstalling it. They did an amazing job in two weeks. They fixed that, it was brilliant. It was really good to see. So we built new canoe racks with, uh, with Fords. So we had volunteers from Fords come down and spend the day with us. And they built new canoe racks with us down at Hagridge Basin. We bought a long reach excavator because uh, the river needed dredging. So we'd been trying for, for many, well, many, a few years to be able to get the, the river, particularly up at Bad Mead and Ho Mill and Sanford Lock Cuts. Um, been trying to get it dredged, but it seemed to have just been uh, the fates against us a little bit because um, every time you're booking the, the company to come and do it, they're like, okay, I've got a six weeks window. It would rain in week one and the waters would go up and we couldn't do anything. But they're not going to wait until the rain stops. They go up and do another job. And then we've only got so many weeks we can do it in. So they're gone. So we ended up making the decision to ensure that we could do it. We bought a dredger this year. Um, and we've already dredged Home Mill, Bado Meads, and um, Sanford Lock. Um, we're now waiting for the dredgings to dry so that we can go and pick all the bits of rubbish out of them that were at the bottom of the river, all the plastic bottles and beer cans and God knows what else. We can, we can fish out of the mud. Then we can braid it off, reseed it with some wildflower um, or grass, depending on where it is. Um, and we'll, we'll have a, well, we have already got a, a nice stretch of river. We'll have a nice stretch <coughs> of banks to go with. Um, we carried out uh, some quick portage reinforcement works um, for, for the, the landing areas and landing stages around uh, the lock gates last year um, because they were in need of renewal. Um, we installed new canoe stages at Paper Mill Lock to give uh, easier access for, for the, the canoeists because they were banging their way through the, can, the cafe area of Paper Mill Lock, the canoe on their shoulder. So let's, let's put one in as soon as they come out of the car park. Um, we felled and cleared a mile of overhanging trees last year in all, and we're looking to, to double that this year. Um, as I said earlier, we repaired some banks uh, with willow faggots, and we repaired and restored some footpaths last year, um, but they were near enough. We added some toilets to a paper mill lock. So we put three, there's now three new toilets in a paper mill lock. We extended the office space at a paper mill lock. Um, we purchased the second event. An event is a grown up toys for boys, really. It's a big track, a, a medium sized factory thing that you can change the heads on. One of the heads we have on it is to cut the grass. So we use that to cut the footpaths along the navigation. Um, in previous times and years, back to our very first slide where it's all frozen over and before global warming and all that malarkey. Um, that was probably all right. But what happens now is you cut your two meter stretch down the middle of the, the footpath, but the nettles on this side are a meter and a half tall, and the nettles on this side are a meter and a half tall. And as soon as it rains, mm -hmm. your two meter stretch disappears. 
So we purchased the second event to be able to follow the first event and then just playing off the top of the nettle ball. So it doesn't affect the nesting and the wildlife we know it, but bring the nettle heights down so that the footpaths are more accessible, um, whether it's raining or, or not. Um, the amount of work we did last year, uh, we oh, I haven't put up there that we we strapped up Rush's Weir at the, when I got there in April. Um, it was starting to crumble, so we put some metal straps in it and um, rock rolled underneath the, the front, uh, front edge of the weir. Uh, I, I could stand here for ages and tell you the amount of work that the guys did, considering it's five of them, was amazing. Truly amazing. And hats off to, to the team. I'm blessed to have the team that I've got for the output that they, they do. Um, then I've got, uh, and we keep the weed clear. Well, you keep the weed clear. Really. So last year, I think we had feedback three times about oxygenated weed, never about penny walk blocking the river um, in places. And they were in the places that were um, not dredged. So the, the reason it was happening was because the water's too shallow, but they've now been dredged and that might be a problem. And we cut the towpaths fortnightly last year. Um, but it was literally every fortnight we had to cut the towpaths um, because the growth was that extreme last summer. Um, it, was, it was every... Uh, and so we've already said we've got rental kayaks, extra trip boats, and an ice cream truck. I was just saying a minute ago about uh, I've got five guys. This is their works plan for this year. I ain't going to do it, truth be told. Um, there's an immense amount of work on here. I'll come into it in detail for, for some of the bits um, in a minute. This, this column over here is stuff that my guys have definitely got to do. Um, things like taking trees down at Springfield. Um, oh, well, but, um, um, these jobs here, we believe that we can have a lead on, but we want to work with volunteers to be able to deliver. So um, these jobs over here, which is things like lock pack management and guard uh, flower pots, and um, we're going to get a poly tunnel so we grow our own flowers to be able to plant in the dinghies. That we've got places like Home Mill, Haybridge Basin. We believe these jobs here we can allocate to volunteers to be able to work with us and um, make a difference to our environment in that sense. And these ones over here uh, are jobs like litter picking um, and willow healing. Um, do you know what willow healing is? So, willow healing is we've just planted willows at the moment. Um, and we planted them last week, which was great. And we planted 400 last week. We've got a plantation of about three and a half thousand willows along the, the navigation. Um, so we planted 400 last week. And they planted them all straight. And then the wind blew this weekend, didn't it? So now they're all like that. So they've got about willow healing, um, but they're here on the bottom of the willow to straighten it up and just, you know, just push it down. So it's not, uh, these, these roles are uh, more a lighter project. But we can't do this by ourselves. It's impossible. So the main reason I'm here, as I said at the very start, is to acknowledge you guys and Chelsea Canal Trust and all the other um, volunteers on the river and say thank you. It's the works we did last year. We couldn't have done without the help of people like you. It wouldn't have happened. So thank you. We're, we're immensely grateful. Um, we're so grateful and so understanding of the, the need and desire for volunteers. Can you just press the, the next one? Um, I still want to know what you're doing with that sheet, mate. I'll, uh, uh, um, uh, I'll show the website. I couldn't help myself. It's not just individual volunteers. We have individual volunteers and we have groups like you know, Your Good Selves. And we have the IWA, obviously, um, Haywich Basin Sailing Association, a couple of paddleboard clubs that are, are on the river. Um, we have uh, 17 canoe clubs that use the river in some way, shape, mean, or form for tutoring, for enjoyment. Um, we have you know, Whitson Wombles that were on the river. But we have Chelmsford Wombles, we have the, the city council and different groups from within, within Chelmsford. We thank you all 
for, for the effort that, that you put in to, to take some of the strain and the day-to-day -day stuff, or the rubbish bags that, um, off of the, the team, really. But we recognise this resource so much that we employ the Louise. Jeff Louise would like to, because you're not in the shot, you're waving at nobody. <laughs> uh, that's why we couldn't stay sitting down there. Are you in the shot now? No, you are. I'm in the shot. I'm okay. <laughs> So we employed a Louise, and Louise is our volunteer coordinator. So I recognise and we recognise as a business the importance of volunteers and volunteer organisations to, to that level that we've employed someone full time to help us engage and manage those that volunteer resource. This is vital to what we do. So I'm going to leave you with Louise for a second. Hi guys, next slide. It's a big picture of me, next slide, so sorry about that. So this is me and I, uh, hello, I started at um, my new job, my new role here um, as the volunteer coordinator at the end of last year, right at the end of last year. So I'm still very, very, very new to this whole world of the uh, navigation. But I thought I'd give you a little bit of a history about myself and, and, and where I've come from, as Anne told you about where he came from. So um, this is just all about what I'm here to do, but I volunteer coordinator that I, you know, I develop the plan, implement the plans, sort out all the um, uh, requirements and recruitments and make sure that all the volunteers are safe um, and uh, all the risk assessments are done and ensure that all the jobs are hopefully and all the volunteer roles are hopefully being done successfully with very happy volunteers. And as you well know, that you know, happy volunteers mean that um, things get done and, and it's, it's just a really great place to be. So that's kind of what I do. And I just basically um, make sure that we work with uh, people like yourselves um, and that we come together um, and we uh, utilize all our resources and all our skills and all our knowledge and uh, to make sure that, that the navigation is um, maintained to the high standard that it is. So that's my role that um, and employed me for. Um, and my main reason of working with volunteers is because I love working with people, but also I love saying thank you. And um, I just always like to celebrate um, the successes and um, the, um, the greatness that the time that people have given up to do something just because they want to. And I, it, I just, it's overwhelming to me. So that's me. And that is uh, me as volunteer coordinator. So I'm very new to the navigation. Yeah, next slide. Um, so my route to the navigation and how I got here was, so I, I joined end of, end of, literally end of last year. And previously I worked for the Chelmsford based um, children's mental health charity, Kids Inspire. And I spent five years there developing their volunteer program. And um, we became winners of the coveted Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. Um, and it is the, uh, the highest award that anyone can receive for volunteering. And it's, it, was, it was just overwhelming to share the news with our volunteers and they just, they couldn't believe it and it's, it was just so wonderful um but we didn't just achieve it by um having a dedicated core team of volunteers because we linked with local groups and we linked with the community and we linked with other um people that are there in Chelmsford and across Essex um that uh to, to make it great and that's kind of what I want to do um, with you guys I want to link up I want to just make sure that we're all working to the same page that we're all celebrating it and 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 told me when he was employed by the board he said the main thing that they asked him to do was to keep the water flowing and that's what you guys do and that's what we do and that's what we want to keep doing is to keep that water flowing so um, that was my last role. And then previously on from that, so I'm good at supporting people and I'm good at loving people and I'm good at saying thank you. Um, and so, yeah, next slide. 
Um, and previously to being a volunteer coordinator, I was a trained early years teacher and forest school leader. So I've got a real passion for the outdoors. I absolutely love getting people outside and I'm all for uh, conservation and um, ecological management and making sure that things are done in the right places outside for the right reasons. So um, I did mention all to Michael and Anton, oh, do you do no mo may? And they went, no, please, we don't. There's plenty of fields inside and we will be cutting down those nettles because we need to make sure that that tow path is free for people to walk along once I'll do no more may in my uh, garden to make sure that the wildlife um, is, is safe there. So I have got a passion for the outdoors. And then previously, I began working my career for the Institute of Marine Engineers. Um, so uh, back in the late 80s, I started working for them. They had me in the library at first, but found out that I was too noisy and uh, moved me to the events department. And I supported um, the Royal Navy and the Marine Engineers and organised conferences around the UK and Europe. So I've kind of got a little bit of a wet, watery background. I've been on a, a submarine and, and a few big um, warships. Um, so I kind of came from the water through a little bit of education and mental health with kids. And here I am at the navigation, um, wanting to support people. So that's me. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Uh, um, about the past, what we were, um, uh, the title of the talk was A Meet the General Manager. So I'm sorry about the bad pictures at the start of me walking on the canal. Um, so I hope you've met me now. And that's, that's that time. We don't have to do that again. Um, but then he was talking about the building the future together was the, the, the key <coughs> phrase. So, um, yeah, well, the way I look at the, the navigation, and I'm going to use the same pictures, um, mainly because I love the sheep which I still run. Um, and he's never going to forgive me for, for not. Uh, um, but we're a big family on the on the navigation. We're like a big family, um, and we need to be more and more like a big family and care for each other and look after each other. Trouble with big families. I come from a big family. There's well, big in these days. It's not necessarily, but I'm one of uh, one of four kids. Um, and without our mum telling us what to do, we've got the chaos in our house as kids. Can you press the thing for us? Now going back to our picture of the river, our big family on the navigation at times is a bit chaotic. And we tend to do things like um, go from home to rickets, litter picking in canoes on a Saturday. And the paddle boarders go from home to rickets, litter picking on paddle boards on the same weekend. Or we've got people going from Bakemoor up, up to Boreham Bridge, litter picking on the side of the, the footpath on the Friday. And the Duke of Edinburgh kids come through on the Saturday and litter pick the same bit. And then on Sunday, we have the scouts come through and they go, there's no litter. This is brilliant. But if they go past Boreham Bridge <clears throat> and up towards um, Stonham's part of the world, there's litter everywhere. Because we pick the bits that are easiest and we don't talk to each other about it. So the way I sort of, if you, you, you might um, as well, only way we can build this river together or build the future together is to communicate and to use Essex waterways limited and our job in this whole scenario, in this whole river, because it's not our river, it's everybody's, it's the community's river, it's the community's navigation. Our job is to facilitate. Our job is to be a hub in the middle. Our job is to control and communicate directions for people. So what we want to do, the first thing we ask the people to do, is to communicate into that and say, We've got a team ready in two weeks' time to go litter picking. Where would you like us to litter pick? Well, that'd be great if you can do from um, Springfield Basin to Barnes. That'd be wicked because no one's done that bit for six weeks or three weeks or two weeks or whatever it is. Instead of it just being, oh, we'll do the same thing. Um, 
So but that's that's with with everything on the river. There is so there's replication after replication. It's just if we if we use Essex waterways, as I said, to facilitate, to provide resources and materials to um, do as we do at the moment and work in partnership. We uh, with the Channel Canal Trust, uh, we obviously work in partnership with Buddy or Buster, depending on whether it's the front or the back of the boat. It's a work boat. <laughs> it, it, the work boat. But um, we also have, in recent months, uh, given facility to use our work boat, the blue long work boats, where enable the, the clearance of penny water to be more effective. Whatever we can do for any group or group of people on our navigation to help them make our lives easier at the end of the day, we should be doing it. I think that's been quite successful, Nim. Absolutely, yeah. Um, oh, this lady here, um, that's Lisa. That's Louise, that's Lisa. I like confusing my life. Um, Lisa's our new administration manager. Uh, she started with us a week after you, two weeks after yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so um, hence we've had to build new offices of paper mill lock because we've got um, some new team coming on board to, to help make this work. Uh, the second thing we need to do to build a future together is dare to share. Not just our work boats or our ability to drive boats um, and skipper boats, and everyone wants to be a skipper, more than welcome to come and uh, join us, or not just us to, to lend mowers, but to ask people to share their time with their families and come and work with us on the river and do whatever you can do, because anyone can do willow healing. Anyone can pull a willow tree and step at the bottom straight out. Anyone can pick up with their kids some litter. Uh, that would be a great example for the kids. We're also asking people to use, if we can use their skills. So if we've got skilled carpenters to, to be able to come on board and work with us to, to be able to um, pre-prepare landing stages or uh, for, for canoeists or boat landing stages or um, work with us on some of the, the projects down at the boatyard. Um, we're asking people to, to work with us to, to be, it's not very really blurry picture, to be, when you guys are out, for us to be able to come and interact with you and provide your lunch. But we need volunteers to make that lunch to be able to provide to the guys that are working. So we, we're looking for, for people who might be IT specialists. It's not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to be wanting to get your waders on and get in the river to make a difference on the river. We're looking for people to be that person that walked down the river with me when I was in year three in primary school and talked to people about the river. I'm happy to go and talk to the primary school. I need a resource of people to work with me to share their knowledge about the river with the next generation of people coming back. So in how old am I? That many years time, about 40 years time, there's someone else standing here that was affected by somebody that just walked with them along the river. What great place to be. It'd be great if we, one of the, the things we want to do, and I'm, I'm looking at all Will's kit going, ha, ha, ha. Um, we want to, to, to record some how-to videos, how to use lock gates, how to paddle safely on the waterway, how to embark and disembark using the portages properly. We pop these things on YouTube, they're open access for everybody, and we get better behaviour because we're educating people rather than, oh, so I didn't do that, which is what do we do what you do what we do so we need to utilize people's skills from such a diverse matrix and there's there's nobody too old and there's nobody too young to be involved in the waterway actively involved in helping us on on the waterway there's a couple of guys at the moment um i'm sure they won't mind me saying um uh, both in their late 70s yeah um that are working in, in Haybridge Basin um, at the moment, dismantling a boat for us. They're having a time of their lives taking this boat uh, apart that's been abandoned. They're absolutely loving it. 
Um, I know that because one of them was my dad, but um, uh, they, they <laughs> absolutely loving the, the time and camaraderie that they're getting to be able to do that. So there, there isn't a, we need this. There is a, how can your group, for anyone who wants to help, help. So we have a kiosk at Haybridge Base. It would be great to have volunteers in the summer months working at the kiosk, not to work, I've got paid staff to work, but to talk to the visitors that are coming along to the kiosk, but they not but talk to the visitors that are coming along to the kiosk and just chat to them about how their day was and how the navigation, what the navigation is all about. Because we get asked, and the team there get asked so much, but they're, I've got to make another burger. Who you the set? It'd be great to just have people that are involved doing that. It would be wonderful. And it's, we need to work with all the different groups along the way to be able to facilitate. You, that's the next one for me. So well, not that side again. That so. side again, but I have just moved your sheep over a bit. It's bigger. It's all right. That's so for me, if uh, anyone wants a copy of that, no, no, photo. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the third thing uh, is it's dream. It's one family, one river. Uh, and it, it just worked together to, to be able to create a great environment for the visitors to our navigation, the users of our navigation. And you guys, uh, as a, a trust, uh, are at the forefront of that. And a golf cap to you do an amazing amount of work and is so greatly appreciated. Um, well, please. Last slide for me. Some of the projects we've got for 2022, I showed you the work plan earlier, but that, was, that work plan was just the maintenance crew. That was just the five guys who dig holes. For want of another word, they do a lot more than dig holes. But this year, we're going to install four new lock gates this winter. We've got a program running from the first week in March, weather permitting, um, to try and get mocked up by Easter uh, for replacing um, Barnes Upper, Cooson Upper, and both the Baddow lock gates, um, which is the most ambitious plan we've ever taken on. Um, so please pray those that do. Um, we're going to replace two culverts, as I was saying about the events earlier, um, to run down the footpath. There are areas where the culverts narrow the footpath. So a culvert is a pipe that goes under the under the footpath, for those that you don't know, um, that leads into a ditch. So we've got to clear the ditch out and replace um, at least two culverts. We're going to short pile behind all of the landing stages. So. Um, any boat users in, uh, in, the, in the, the room will know that when you're mooring up at the lock, you jump onto the wooden landing stages, and if there's been heavy rains, there's washout behind the landing stage. But um, dodgy that. So we, last year we filled it in and we tried to do some temporary repairs. This year we're going to short pile behind the landing stage. I bought 25 tonne of aggregate to be able to, to fill in the gap behind it to, to Let's try and solve the problem for, for the long term. Um, we're going for ambitious. I love being ambitious because if we go for eight, we might get four. We're going to rebuild eight miles of footpath. Got 14 miles of it to do in total. So eight miles is a, um, a starting point, and we're working with the, the county council, um, who very generously will supply materials. Um, what they don't supply is bodies to move the materials. So we're we're tapping up Neil over here and saying, have you got a team that can be able to work with that with that with us? That would be that would be brilliant. Um, we're working with work who are the Waterways Recovery Group um, that's part of the IWA in July, and we're going to strap and rebuild Stonham's Weir. Um, we're building so that that we can communicate with each other better. I'm saying building, I've got to find the talent first. Um, an online hub to enable the different community groups to talk to each other. So we'll be able to go in, access as a, a, a user, what's on this weekend, there's a little pick here, there's a clue pick here, there's a clue pick here, and be able to go, oh, I'll join that, or I'll join that. So that, so that we're able to communicate freely with the, the different groups on the river. 
um, to enable it so that we're not doing that, we're all doing the same bit, and to enable it so that we can uh, understand the needs of, of people along the river and get feedback. Um, I said a minute ago, I'll be tapping Will up. Um, he seems to have a lot of kit. I want to shoot a series of how-to videos. We want to plant another 500 willows. Um, I want to put in my first beehive. I think that's really important for the environment and we're in a unique position that we have um, unreachable and unaccessible land. So we could potentially put some beehives into places where, where other beehives cannot reach um, to, to be able to, uh, so we'll put one in for, for this year. Uh, to understand it, and then uh, there's a bit of a long-term ambition to be able to put a few more in. We're going to paint all the lock gates. Um, we want to eradicate penny wall forever. Um, I've got to have a goal. If I can have a goal of eight miles of footpath, I'm going to have a goal of eradicating penny wall forever. Um, uh, uh, I'm sure that, that Neil's discussed penny wall with you more, and you have more detail on that than I can ever understand. Um, we want to dredge another mile of the river, at least. Um, over the, um, from June, or oh the after the school holidays. I'm, uh, I'm done for this winter in the project. It happened a lot quicker than we thought it would, which was really good. Um, I then can't really be put in a great big excavator hook in from March the 16th to June the 16th, when that's spawning season for the fish, and you're not allowed to put a fishing hook this big in. So we won't be doing anything until after June, so therefore after the summer, but. Uh, at least another uh, mile of uh, river. Um, we want to get the Susan back on the river this year. One of our goals at, at Essex Waterways. Um, um, are you guys all aware of the Susan Trust? Um, one of the, the last uh, barges to work on, on the navigation. Um, it's currently up in St. Osif. Um, we're working hard with the Susan Trust at the moment to, to see what we can do both financially and physically to be able to get it back onto to the river and to, to uh, start using her. And uh, it would be great to have her as another trip boat that we could possibly use out of Sanford in conjunction with the museum there. To, to be able to have people experience the traditional working boat up to Springfield uh, and back um, in the future at some time. Um, we want to revitalize the Hope Mill Island. Um, we're going to wait until the council decides what it's doing with the bridges, but that might be another 50 years yet before the highways department decide what they're doing with that. So um, in the meantime, we, we're going to look at what we can do at the, the on the island uh, the, on the left hand side as you go across the bridge from the car park we've got an island bit in the middle there um, that we want to bring down the foliage on there a little bit put some picnic tables on there try and encourage people away from the lock itself um, because there's a lot of kids um, young adults swimming in the lock at home which is quite a dangerous place to swim so if we create an area that's more conducive for them um, on the island and put some uh, landing stages and that kind of thing in the weir pool side of the island, that would be really good. Um, we want to identify the nature hotspots uh, and then A, protect them, B, understand them, so that this is probably our biggest thing for, for the year if we can get it done. What we want to, to develop, and we're working again very closely um, with Shelburne Canal Trust to develop, and, and you guys are doing an audit for us. Uh, at the moment of all the signage along the river, we want to take the signage from being flat to being interactive. So as you walk along the river, it becomes a tour. So if we find, or when we find, an identify an area that's for otters, for example, we've got otters on the navigation, um, we put a sign opposite the area, please be aware there's otters here, and a QR code. So the kids can zap with their thumb, uh, pull up the, their photo thingy, get the QR code, and learn about otters live on the river so that when they see <coughs> the, um, the pillbox at Cooten Lock, where one of my things that we'll be doing this year, um, not here, but one of the things I'll be doing this year is working with the sea cadets, army cadets and the air cadets to, to renovate the, the pillbox because there's a generation coming through that won't know what that is and what it meant and what it did. So We'll put some signage in there, renovate it, but then 
they'll be able to hit a QR code and understand the importance of it and maybe understand a little bit more about World War II and that it wasn't all the glamour that the that Hollywood's portraying it as. Um, these things were really important. So we, anyway, we're, we're looking to develop a digital signage tool along the river this year. So um, we've got a lot of things going on and a lot of things cut out for us for, for 2022. Really exciting place to work. I love it. Um, it's great coming back to, to my roots in that sense. And I, I absolutely love the place. Um, and yeah, it's going to be uh, an exciting place to, to, to be over the next 10 years as we, we, we move it uh, to its, its next stage of evolution. But um, I think that's, that's me. Uh, thank you. Dan's side just went to the light off because that we couldn't see you much, but we heard you. And not see him, he's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what in energy, enthusiasm, innovation, it was all there in that talk, wasn't it? And and you know, I'm I'm really excited about the way things are, are, are moving on, moving forward. Um, some reservations here and there. I mean, the no mo may thing is really good. <laughs> but we can come back to that. Now is the chance for some questions. Sorry, that's time for some questions from everybody. I'm asking people online to use the chat if they can, William. So if you keep an eye on that, that would be helpful. I'm going to be much stricter than we've maybe been in the past about questions. If you ask a question, the question must take less than 20 seconds to ask. <laughs> and it must be a question, not a point of view that you want to put across, because you wanted to do the talk really and someone else did it. So you could have said beforehand <laughs> if you wanted to. Do it. <laughs> so, I, I, right. If that sounds unfair, I'm sorry, but that means we can move through a number of questions and not sort of get hung up. So, first of all, in the room, is there anyone who wants to ask a question? 20 seconds, and it's got to be a question. I have quite a few questions. Go so with one then, of them. Be, no, no, you're only allowed one to start off with. Um, uh, can I just say uh, on questions, particularly in the room, I wear hearing aids. So um, uh, I'm going to repeat speak the question. <laughs> Go for it. You've got 15 seconds left. Okay. Um, the nettles. I've noticed when the banks are cut, the cut vegetation is not collected. Therefore, there's a big fertility build-up. Nettles will grow higher, faster, and biodiversity will decrease as you know, your classic untidy weeds, nettles, brambles, increase. Could there be a way of collecting vegetation to make less way for work for some? Um, makes it really difficult. The answer is we would love to. Um, and we were, were talking to Event South East on the, the type of tools that were available that may or may not collect uh, the cuttings as we go. Was there a way to be able to um, blow the paths of the vehicle moving along, drag the... But ultimately, at the moment, um, it's impractical. Um, to collect the... the the uh, volume of cutting, because if it's 14 miles that we do in two weeks, um, it's just uh, we haven't got the resource to be able to do so. What I will say, though, however, is where previously we've cut nettles that are this high, with uh, two events working along the river in tandem every fortnight, we should be cutting things that are this high. Or we're cutting this much off. Might be higher than that, because you don't want to, but you know what I mean. So. The, the amount of byproduct should be less each cut. Okay, got that, thank you. Save your next question, because we might come back to you. Chris, over here, 20 seconds. Hi, I'm John Harrison. I'm Hi, John. A, um, substitute Avery's Parish Council member here today, because our appointed member is put in it some way. Right, now I'm going to read back. Um, on the screen, I think it sounds the same. Towpath, towpath. Where's the COE path come from? As opposed to the CO. Well, I apologise for my um, confusion on whether I'm towing something or treading on something. Which towpath? Yeah. Probably like which. Yeah. Yeah. There's another one. <laughs> With the, sorry, was that finished? I wasn't going to tell you what the question yeah. was. Okay. And you asked it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Dave. <laughs> Hi, 
Um, have you had any problems when dredging with your equipment going through um, the clay base of the canal? No. Um, uh, the team uh, are very experienced, firstly, and we um, we brought people in. We brought the tool, but we brought the labour as well. So um, there is a technical name for it, but basically, uh, on the, instead of the, they have the teeth on the, the front of the, the dredger bit, but it's the equivalent of a, a best description really is a bit of drain pipe is then put on the teeth so that the teeth don't cut the bottom of the river. So all you're effectively doing is collecting silt and rubbish and shopping trolleys and taking them out, not the, the base of the river. We are, it was Michael, our senior lensman's biggest bit of communication to anybody that went near the dredger is that um, do not rip the bottom out of the river because we won't have any water. Um, Chelsea will have a lot, but we won't have any um, if we do. So we were very careful to ensure that that didn't happen. Thank okay. You. I just want to check uh, if there's anything online, with There, you. there are. We've, we've got quite a few. So okay. if you um, can choose one and read it out, that'd be great. So uh, the first one, um, Is from uh, from uh, Pam Swaby. Uh, there's been talk of replacing the weir outside the Essex Record Office with a lot. Is that going ahead? Okay, uh, I think there's been talk on replacing the, the weir, uh, the records office, and how to link the, the navigation to the, the River Chelmer for a long time. Um, is probably the short answer to that. Uh, I think it's our aspiration that those talks continue and that that's still something that very much we would like to happen, that we're lobbying to be able to happen. One of the, the key points of um, having boats on the river in Chelmsford was to, uh, uh, and being involved with the bid from our perspective, was to show people how attractive this could be if we could get boats into that part of the river. And perhaps a bit of an unfair question just saying that you, because it should really be able to crackle the, the network group, you know, which involves Channel Canal Trust and others. Uh, we're all interested in that as an aspiration and, and made fairly good progress so far. So yeah. So. William, let's have another one from, uh, from online. Okay. Um, what car parking facilities are now available at Paperville? <laughs> There's a, a different tone to the online <laughs> questions, isn't there? Um, you know, They've been a bit bolder because they can just type it in without being identified so much. <laughs> much more polite than that. I, I guess the, the, the real quick answer to that is the same thing it always has been. Um, so we have a boat owner's car park um, that is the Essex uh, uh, Waterways Limited car park for its boat owners and for uh, its staff and limited volunteers. And then the, the farmer um, has a, a car park next to us. Um, that's five pounds a day to be able to use. Um, but uh, we're talking to anybody and everybody with a bit of land that might be for sale anywhere along the 14 mile stretch of the river as uh, kind of get hold of it to be able to have more car parking, um, including Chelmsford Council because they've got some, some land along the, the river to be able to um, do something with. But at the moment, as it stands, there's a boat owner's car parking facility as there always has been. I think that was a direct question, and, but it, it does open up that wider issue, doesn't it? That the problem of the access waterway space, that the more popular navigation has become during the pandemic, more people wanted to visit, but it doesn't have the infrastructure to support that many visitors yeah. without work yeah. being done, as you say, uh, on, on extra car park and yeah. so on. Yeah. And, and also generating extra income, making sure that the people who come and use it are paying for it. Uh, which you've successfully done with, with paddle borders and so on, but yep. not, not so much with walkers who get a free ride. I'm not sure I can charge them to walk up the river. Uh, no, 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 are we getting to that level of the world yet? Hasn't it just told us about all the money spent on towpaths repairing? Well, you could put challenge styles in, couldn't I? That's I think that's right. <laughs> I'll get 10% of that one. Well, yeah. One more from there, we'll come back in the okay. room. Okay, um, well, it is... Um, Piers H has asked quite a lot of questions, so I'm, I'm going to... Well, he's in the room, so uh, don't start there, <laughs> <laughs> He's cheating, he's online and... Uh, ah. Oh, is that you? Yes, that's Piers oh, right. is there. Is there anyone that you particularly like him to... No, he's <laughs> oh. an email, I think. 
Well, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if there's a number of questions and, and that's prepared to answer, yeah, well, that'd be great. I'll oh, sit down and have a coffee after. Yeah, yeah. Just a Anything else, William, or should we go yeah. out of the room? No, I think we, we can go to the room. Any? Duncan. Yeah. You have a big projection for 2022. Obviously, it's very ambitious. Obviously, there's a financial constraints on this as well. So, do you feel that you'll have the financial resources to actually achieve what you're doing? And if you do not carry out all the projected proposals, have you planned for 23, 24, 25 on this? The, the, uh, the works plan we're putting together for each of the areas, so be it um, a commercial work, works plan or, or maintenance work plan, is vulnerable. Um, one of the things I learned very quickly on, on managing a river is you can write the plan out 50 times. Mother Nature has her own view of what's going to happen at any given time. So uh, we're, we're very comfortable that anything that we can't achieve in the, the time frame that we're expecting to achieve it, we can roll forward. Um, but lock gates, for example, we've already paid for the four sets of lock gates. It's already um, paid for the installation, so it's just the, the timing of putting those in place. Um, the commercial side of the business, um, we've, we've seen success with the trip boats and the kiosk um, and paddleboard licenses, etc. Um, over in, in the last 12 months that uh, are leaving us in a confident place to be able to recruit um, people to help in other aspects of the business. Because at the end of the day, we're a non-for-profit organisation. Every penny we take, we spend. Every penny we take, we spend in the same year. So there's a, a lot of that stuff's already sort of banked, if that makes sense. Last question. You spoke a lot about litter picking. It's surprising me that there's so much litter on the towpaths, the river banks. Um, it strikes me that most of the people who use them surely love the river. Why are they got the river? I wish that was only true. Um, I really do wish it was only true. But um, whilst uh, 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 the majority do love the, the river and are conscious of their environment, we also have a lot of visitors, particularly during COVID, um, that uh, have discovered the river. Um, litter is one of our problems. Uh, I have a problem maybe that well, was that we've lost lock beams because people have had barbecues on them. Taken their tin barbecue, set it alight on a lock beam and then burnt a hole through the lock. Um, uh, and the landing stage areas and things like that. So whilst there's uh, a lot of work to be done uh, materially, there's as much work to be done uh, education yeah. and, and engagement. Which is why we're very keen to, where, where traditionally we might have been looking at volunteers to be able to work with us collecting penny war or digging ditches or whatever, where there's such much greater scope to, to be able to work with, with people of all ages, shapes, and sizes to be able to educate people. That's all it is. People don't, don't think. Um, but there is a lot of rubbish. Um, as I'm, I'm sure Neil and these guys will, will testify. And we pull all sorts of things out of the river. Um, we pulled a safe out last week. Unfortunately, there wasn't millions of pounds in it, but we did pull a safe out last week. But there, there, there is all sorts of things that we, we find in the river. Um, and it is a shame. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop the questions there. And I'm going to, in a moment, ask uh, Duncan to say a few words. I just want to say two things. I mean, firstly, uh, and refer to the family and working together and certainly my experience so far uh, is that Anne's a very uh, appropriate person to work with, very, very understanding and as he said, you know, we've been able to work together very well in terms of what we've done. No, didn't no, no, say no, that no. in week one. No, <laughs> start for me to go on. Um, I just want to come back to this picture of me with this sheep. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the fact you feel it needs addressing. And, and I, I, I do feel this, you know, I don't want you walking away with the wrong impression. Okay? <laughs> we finished a work party on Sunday, uh, and it was around the Beely area. And each time we'd, we, we'd gone back to refreshments to the work, we'd gone back again to uh, this location. And each time I walked past the building, I heard a sheep making a noise. Now, 
I do, I'm, a, I'm a shepherd during part of the year, so I sort of understand sheep to some extent, okay? And I reckon I could hear a sheep in distress, but we were doing a work part today, so we carried on doing the work part too. When we finished on the way back, I said to the guys, I'm going to have to go and find what I believe is a sheep in distress. They said, oh, God, be so silly, you can't possibly be. I skirted around this big thicket of brambles, and there was a sheep stuck in the brambles, okay? So what you do if there's a sheep stuck in the brambles, obviously, you you know, you catch it and you pull the brambles out. We're very careful, and we did it. What you shouldn't do, just if it ever, ever happens to you, don't then say, let's have a selfie. I'll stand here with a <laughs> smile on my face with this sheep while you take a photo of me. That's the first thing you shouldn't do. The next thing you shouldn't do is put it on the website when you do the work party report. How stupid am I to have done that? <laughs> Especially realising that someone's going to be looking at that website very soon and it's going to use that photo to the maximum. So I just <laughs> apologise. <laughs> It, there is no caption competition associated with that picture of me with a smile on my face holding a sheep at all. So I don't want to go in there any further again. In fact, I think we'll take it off the website. Really, we don't want to uh, but a bit, uh, thank you, everybody, for your contribution. If you want to talk uh, later to um, Ant and to Louise, I'm sure they will. But Duncan, just final words to you if I could, please. Come on. Yeah. Right. First of all, I'd like to thank Ant and Louise for coming along tonight. I, I'm sure we've all had a very enjoyable uh, listening to what Essex Waterways are looking to do, how they're going to go forward and uh, how they're going to work with Channel Canal Trust and others to improve the local uh, community use of the facilities along the uh, uh, navigation. So can we have a big round of applause for both Ant and Louise for their I find them to very, very interesting, and some of the comments and questions you asked have been really interesting, and the responses we've had from you, and so it's been really pleasing for you to come along and give us a, an update on what you're doing and how you see us going forward. So once again, can we have another round of applause?